minuscule technical glitch give me about 30 seconds and I'll start in 30 seconds yeah All right. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, this is Preeti Shetty. I run the baking department for Hamstick, and I'm here to uh, take you through what we do at Hamstick with our baking course and uh, any uh, how do we function, what do we do in, during the program, how could you make use of it, how could you make use of the uh, things you learn during the course. Uh, post you finish the course that's what we are going to be discussing today and uh, I'll start right away yeah so what we will do is I will first give you details on what we do and how do we function and things like that and you could put down your queries um, in the comment section and post I'm done with the discussion uh, I will answer all the queries um, after looking uh, through them all right so let's start with what I'm going to be discussing today the uh, the next 35 40 minutes right so of course I'm going to be discussing baking but let's look at what are the things I'm going to be talking about right I'll quickly I'll quickly run through uh, what do we do with reference to our theory, how do we conduct our practicals, what do we do there, what is the additional feature of the course, uh, how do you make use of the course and uh, also quickly bringing you the highlights of uh, the course at the end of the uh, discussion. I'll begin with the theory first and uh, most people when they start the program they don't realize that oh there is so much of theory that one needs to learn and understand. I know that most people think uh, baking is an art, baking is a craft, which is all true, uh, but it's also science and therefore you need to know and understand uh, what is going on and what is exactly happening in there that you need to, uh, you know, how do you, there are lots of permutation combinations in terms of flavors, in terms of uh, how you, uh, you pick and choose uh, your ingredients, in terms of uh, the increasing of ingredients, decreasing on ingredients uh, with reference to your taste, with reference to your dietary needs, all of that, right? So that is uh, it sounds uh, it's not very difficult but it's not as simple as as well what I mean by that is that there is some science that one needs to understand that why are you mixing this with this and not something else and how does it change everything so those things are important and to begin with uh, you know whenever uh, even if you consider it to be an art you need to know what are the uh, you know what are the things you're going to be using so it's very important to know and understand the ingredients that go in and uh, where do they come from how do you alter them all those things can only happen if you understand uh, what are these ingredients uh, what is the function of these ingredients and uh, and how do you alter if required right so uh, let's take one very tiny example uh, we all know that we add sugar to most of our confections right most of the confections we add sugar now sugar adds sweetness to the uh, to your baked product or whatever you make but there are other reasons why sugar is added there are many scientific reasons so to say why sugar is added and therefore how much quantity can you reduce how much could you uh, you know add more if your flavor uh, profile is such that you like your product to be extremely sweet these are things that one needs to understand to be able to uh, make use of it right so they're, they're very basic ingredients that you're using flour but what kind of flour could you use and if you're altering it you know you'd hear a lot of times about uh, uh, using uh, 
maybe uh, something uh, replacing something with eggs right because you're not wanting to eat eggs on that particular day or your dietary restriction or anything but one needs to know and understand that every recipe cannot be altered where ingredients are just altered that it doesn't function like that one needs to know where you can alter ingredients uh, and where you need to alter the recipe entirely so these are things that you would learn if you join the program now let me quickly run you through what are the things we do uh, some of the topics of theory that we are going to cover I'm going to quickly run you through them honestly there are uh, about 23 24 of them uh, uh, when we start the program we have to finish all of these for you to actually understand the whole uh, gamut of uh, baking but to st begin with we look at flour we look at a variety of flour we look at wheat very specifically what parts of wheat gives you what kind of flour and those things then we discuss milk and cream because they not only add flavor and uh, liquid to the uh, to the big product but they do a lot of interesting things so what kind of uh, milk what kind of cream uh, to be used all those uh, things we're going to be discussing fats and oils extremely essential I know most people uh, would not want to consume fat and oil uh, at all in in some cases but one must know that in baking it's imperative and also for our life in general fats and oils are extremely important most of our visceral organs require fat so good fat is extremely important one really needs to be cautious of how much fat and what kind of fat are we consuming as fat by itself is not bad most food products aren't bad the way we consume them and the way uh, we abuse our bodies is the reason why we tend to uh, look at uh, you know uh, all of these uh, food products with uh, uh, caution or uh, dread sometimes that oh I won't touch the flour I, do, I don't eat what one needs to know what so when we study we're going to learn a little bit about what gluten is you'll see very often that people are saying oh uh, you know I like everything gluten free gluten free is very good for health which very specifically somebody is uh, gluten intolerant I understand but otherwise one needs to know what gluten does so what what we do here in our baking uh, we take extreme care that we try and avoid as much as processed uh, ingredients the base bare basics like a baking powder baking soda the leavening agent that is required we use that but for a bread we make it uh, the artisanal way with with your hands uh, we don't uh, add gluten uh, you know uh, powder extra gluten powder which is mostly the norm for all the breads commercially so we ensure we don't do that that we try and achieve a good quality bread with using uh, the basic ingredients without adding too many food additives but it's extremely important to learn about these things as well let you know so you know uh, a when you walk into a supermarket post the course you would be cautious of checking the labels and understanding what is going into your food uh, because we're going to be discussing some food additives and things like that and then you'll notice that lot of it is being added in the processed food that we uh, pick up from uh, our supermarkets right so those things uh, are also things that we're going to uh, learn in terms of uh, the theory so we're going to look at the ingredients we're going to look at nuts and foods extremely important whether it's breads or confectionaries we add a lot of it salt and sugar extremely important again they add flavor but they do a lot of other things to our baked goods as well we will be discussing that when we do the uh, wh for when we take up the program for whoever takes up the program then a little bit of the science of baking whether it's the processes uh, uh, with reference to bread or the science of yeast or understanding gluten which is a protein and even when we do sugar we learn variety of sugar and other things but you also learn what is sugar chemically and uh, those things as well a little bit about preservation because uh, we will be using some preservation techniques when we uh, make something uh, with reference to a product or if we use some produce which has to be preserved right so whether it's a, 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 a orange marmalade that you're going to use in an orange cake or uh, whether uh, you uh, you know dry freeze your uh, mangoes for a later date you need to understand preservation a little bit for you to be able to use those ingredients 
since baking is a cooking technique we try and understand various other big cooking techniques because somewhere we make use of some of these techniques right we uh, a lot of our techniques are uh, interlinked in the sense that you may use one for the other like for example or if one is uh, you know using a uh, if you're uh, grilling a meat uh, so you use a griller to give it the nice color but you put it in the oven to finish off the cooking so you need to understand the process therefore we will be looking at uh, various cooking methods then there is recipe balancing and understanding food science a little bit this is basically uh, what I discussed that how do you uh, alter things in a recipe what do you buy what is the minimum requirement of say sugar in a recipe or fat in a recipe and things like that then understanding leavening agents uh, this is again there are a few leavening agents we use to leave in our products from yeast to baking soda uh, sometimes just uh, techniques and water vapor that we use to leave in our products how do they function where do we use them very important for us to learn and understand then we also look at uh, you know understanding the uh, science of how things work what i mean by that again is uh, there are various methods of making the same product for example uh, i can bake a bread using three different techniques right so uh, we will be discussing those techniques some of it uh, we will be uh, using applying here for our recipes as well uh, what we try and do is you know if we are making say 10 to 15 kinds of breads we you try and use different techniques at different uh, for different breads so we get a gist of uh, sort of how do you work around with bread likewise uh, f uh, uh, for, for cakes right there uh, let's take vanilla sponge cake for example there the in use of ingredients, uh, the ingredients that we use to make the vanilla sponge cake is going to be uh, pretty uh, basic. And let's say there are some seven uh, typical ingredients that I'm going to be using to make the vanilla sponge cake. But there are various techniques, various methods of making the sponge cake, which will give you a slightly different output in terms of flavor, in terms of texture. And we precisely do that here in class where we uh, you know we may be using simpler uh, uh, pro, uh, you know if flavors but we are learning various techniques so that you can mix and match them understand how do you use them uh, when you want to uh, you know make something for yourself or when you start your business whichever uh, way it is for you to understand what technique works for you the best and how do you sort of make use of which technique for what kind of cake that is also something that is important it sounds mumbly jumbly but once you start doing it here in class it uh, it's going to be fairly easy so like i told you there's this one vanilla cake you can make it in four different ways uh, a slight change in ingredients maybe in certain cases but it will give you a completely different output likewise it will give you a different texture which means that this vanilla cake can be uh, used to make other products differently so depending on what you want whether you want it to be extremely soft extremely rich extremely uh, you know a little dry so that it can soak in a lot of liquid depending on that you will be changing your uh, changing your processes right and pick and choose so we're going to learn various the whole idea is to not l just learn to make 50 products the idea is to learn various methods and processes of making the products the then the peripherals you can work in change which is flavor adding flavor and you know adding different ingredients uh, peripheral ingredients the basics remain the same likewise for cookie also we make like five to seven types of cookies every cookie uh, is t in, in terms of taste it's different it's also designed in terms of different types of cookies so you could have a molded cookie you could have a dice cookie you could have a ice box cookie you could have a bar cookie so various cookies uh, using various techniques you 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 try and make different kinds of cookies and there are other uh, pastries also we will be looking at like we're going to be looking at pies and uh, puffs and making use of them to make interesting products we're going to look at uh, those in those products as well right uh, let's <coughs> come to what are the uh, these are not all 50 but some of them uh, some of the products that uh, you you know during the course uh, we teach our students so first I'm going to look at breads 
So we're going to start with a basic loaf. We teach whole wheat loaf. We teach multigrain loaf. We do a baguette in class. We do focaccia. We do pizzas and donuts and pita breads. And uh, so we also sometimes uh, teach the ac accompaniments. Like suppose uh, we do the burger. We also teach you how to make the patty and maybe the mayo. Uh, basically, uh, mayo from fresh, like from uh, the basic from the ingredients not a store bought mayo bottle likewise when we make pita bread we also teach you the accompaniment how to make the hummus so we uh, do that in class uh, when we make the pizza we teach you how to make the concas which is the sauce that goes on top of the pizza so we teach you the concas as well uh, likewise wherever uh, you know we can add more value to the product we add by teaching you how to use it and of course we discuss how do you uh, use the bread what do you make with it once you've you know once you've made the product on that day uh, then we also discuss uh, the life cycle of the product for how long can you keep it what is the keeping quality and how do you make use of it how do you store it so every day post class we do that right so that's with breads some of these pictures are uh, pictures that of the students who've made the product the very first time that they've made it. So instead of taking up online pictures, I decided to put the pictures of the students uh, who've made the products. The first. So cake. We are also teaching you a vegan cake and we'll tell you. So if you're doing a chocolate vegan cake, we'll teach you. Al we'll also tell you alterations and uh, you can make it into a vanilla sponge. So that we keep doing where we, uh, for every recipe, uh, if there is a, eggless alternative we do a eggless alternative we do quite a few eggless products as well uh, the blueberry white chocolate cake is a so we do three two or three different kinds of eggless uh, sponge recipes which you can uh, you know change flavors and uh, do variety of products with at home and wherever alternatives are possible we give you alternatives and wherever uh, you know a, a, a tweak in a flavor and you could create a new product that also is done but none of these are counted as 50 recipes when when i say 50 recipes we do each and every product in class apart from all these alterations and varieties that variants that we can uh, discuss but these we uh, do 50 products we specifically do in class right then we do a ragi cake for people who want to try uh, cake with other flowers and we also do a chocolate frosting which is without using chocolate with uh, cocoa powder and things like that then we do the eggless chocolate ganache cake again uh, something that is uh, loved by most students because it's a you know very often people say eggless baking especially cakes are a little tough they're not that tasty but uh, the three or four recipes that we use for our sponges eggless sponges they come out pretty well and uh, they're widely uh, accepted most of our students use it for their commercial uh, you know uh, business as well we also do a few traveling cakes uh, we do carrot cake banana walnut pineapple upside down apple crumble cake we do the christmas cake uh, for those who join in time, probably uh, in for in time of Christmas, you can make your own uh, rum and fruit cake. So we do the cre Christmas cake, we do the soaking in class and we uh, make our cakes. We do the marble tea cake, chocolate chip muffins. So these are our traveling cakes that we do. And then we do a variety of pastries. We do uh, pies and tarts and quiches. We also do the wedge puff and the palmier. So we... Uh, don't have a dough sheeter we have to do it with our bare hands and a uh, basically a rolling pin you roll your own uh, sheet of uh, pastry for the puff pastry so it's a two-day affair uh, where you know you have to make the dough on one day and then let it chill well and then next day you make your uh, puffs and uh, your palmiers and things like that uh, it's one of the tedious uh, products that we work uh, work on and uh, probably the one that uh, you know gets consumed within minutes so we always uh, post class discuss how uh, you know you have to use so much strength and it takes so much patience and time and when the product is ready it just gets gobbled in minutes so uh, 
it's f- it's a interesting exercise uh, physically and also to test your patience how do you work well with uh, the products and things like that so it's an interesting affair every time we make uh, puffs the first for most people it's the first time that you're rolling the dough and making your puff and also for neither any of the products we don't use uh, margarine or any sort of uh, substitute for butter wherever you know butter is required we always use butter so uh, you know the products are so tasty that it can be consumed immediately the puffs i'm talking about and at the end of it it is not going to give you heartburns like the store bought uh, puff products because we don't use uh, fa- uh, you know butter substitutes we only use butter and for all the products that we use uh, except for the recipe specifically calls for um maybe oil especially in eggless baking but otherwise we uh, use only butter for all our recipes then we also learn other desserts like uh, we make creme brulee in class we make the creme caramel we make uh, cheesecakes we make the cold one we make the baked one we also make uh, red velvet cupcakes uh, we make but vanilla buttercream cupcakes so you learn a lot of variety of uh, uh, you know icings one of which is uh, to make a particular variety of buttercream we learn about variety of buttercreams but we make a couple of them in class uh, practically uh, then we also uh, do sugar craft uh, in class this is basics and the pictures that you see on screen these are these are our students pictures our students uh, work who you know worked on these uh, products and uh, uh, in a course of a day or two uh, what what we do is students choose the uh, dummy uh, in, you know the uh, the design that they want to work on mo- sometimes original design sometimes uh, inspired by some patterns they choose the dummy that they want to work on and then they we teach them how to cover it how to create if there are pieces to be created flowers to be made or uh, Uh, you know uh, characters to be made or figurines we teach them uh, depending on your individual uh, you know choice what you have chosen to uh, make we help you execute that in class and then you could take that product so we make this on a dummy because it takes a, a while to you know practice this and make this for the very first time most people uh, when they come to our class they're touching the fondant for the very first time so we teach you a couple of ways of covering the fondant uh, we teach you uh depending on your theme how to work with your cake how do you you know make use of it how do you try it and all those things so that's that's also something that we cover and if need be we make the royal icing and teach you uh using of the royal icing uh and um, any other peripherals like fondant is readily available sometimes you need a little bit of uh, other products to you know harden your product how harden your fondant and things like that so we do uh, discuss that we tell you how to make use of it we tell you how to you know keep your cake how to uh transport them uh when you once you finish them and things like that so those things are also discussed when we uh do the uh you know the dummy the cakes uh, the fondant cakes and things like that right <coughs> excuse me uh let's look at the other additional things that we do for our students as in we teach them so this is what we do with reference to the theory and the practicals but if you were to uh you know look at this as a future business or something that you want to um, make money out of like trying to make your passion work for you that sort of a thing then you need to know have a know of of a few things more than just the understanding of how do you make the product or what is the science behind making the product that's just the tipping point it's just the starting point where you know these things but if you were to whether it's a small business or a big business if you were to uh, start something on your own there are other peripherals that one needs to learn know understand right so those are also things we do in class where during the course we teach you how to do the costing for your products for made to order business how do you do the costing for most people uh, there are two things one is that either people oversell or people undersell when you oversell or undersell in both cases you sort of uh, you know uh, clog the market the market becomes bad because if you are some somebody who's selling selling for cheap uh, 
it sort of uh, you know uh, sort of puts a thing for the whole uh, community of bakers that oh baking bakers come cheap because you have not done your costing right you are charging people way less or uh, often times there are people who uh, think that you know b- we are not here for the money we are only passionate about it so we may just charge people very minuscule fee but one needs to know what has gone into your uh you know making of the product it's not just the ingredients a lots of other things that go into making of the final product that goes into the hands of a customer uh and then there are people who also oversell uh they overprice the product they charge way more uh for a service that they have not really done a good job of that also brings bad name for people who are doing the business in the vicinity right so therefore uh at large it's your responsibility to price rise right but there's also other reasons because uh, a lot of times when i ask my students um if they are already selling and they are you know they are doing some products some sales and they join the course uh, to sort of and they may not have uh, you know taken it up professionally or learnt it they have uh, seen a red and picked up things and they are maybe good at some things but uh, i have a lot of students who come uh because they want to understand what is actually going on and they may be pretty successful also but they say that you know this is important that they know and understand how things function because it helps them scale up things for later right if you know something so if you just have seen a recipe and you know to make that recipe well you cannot uh you know you won't be able to uh, create more items using probably that recipe but if you understand how it functions then it becomes far more easy often times uh, i have students who uh, you know they make the products but they don't know why this product failed what happened for it to either sink or burn or dry out they, so these are things that are important which is something that you will not get uh, you know looking at videos this is something that you will get uh, either by trying things hands on or min- bare minimum is that you need somebody to uh sort of handhold you to tell you that why this is happening what is happening and how can you you know correct it so that's why a class is uh, a lot more effective uh so that's that's as far as uh, you know why people who e- even though they have a you know business which is flourishing they come over and they want to take the course right coming back to the costing uh when i ask my students how do they cost the product the a uh, common answer is that uh, little bit of uh, you know ingredients uh, ingredients ka cost little bit profit and that's how i came up with the costing or even funnier and funny just to listen but actually it's not funny at all that uh, most people look around the vicinity what is the general going rate for a particular cake and then they price it according to that but you don't know what the other person's raw material is and what your raw material is you don't know what sort of uh, packaging you are doing you don't know what kind of costs you are incurring and what kind of cost this person is incurring to run the business right so everything is different you so therefore you need to know understand these things what are the peripherals what are the variables that one needs to keep in mind when you come up with the costing of a product. product so we do that with our costing class then uh one if wants to start a business today is time uh today is a good time uh, what i mean by that is you don't necessarily have to have a physical store to start your product you don't necessarily need to uh, place ads on commercial uh you know media to uh, sort of tell people that you hey hey you exist and you're doing this your social media your internet is good enough to get you to people who would be interested in your products and it's more structured it's it can be a uh, lot more uh, pointed in the way uh, you want to uh, connect with people uh, and a lot more effective very cost effective uh, so to understand this you may uh, need a lot of time and the promise is in that you are going to become a internet uh, marketing expert but the this is the starting point where we discuss internet marketing where you where you tell where, where we tell you what are the things that are involved uh, what and how can you reach and know and understand right so the by no means we are saying that you are going to become the next internet marketer but it will give you uh, crutches to 
understand how the world of internet marketing works uh, which also sort of helps you say you are somebody who is going to outsource this work to someone else either a person or an agency but you need to know what is the know how you know what is a good thing for you and how does this function because if you do not know you could be you know either fleece sometimes or uh, maybe it's not the best option for you so those are things that we discuss in our internet marketing class the various strategies that one can apply what is going around right now and uh, so that's that's basically your starting point to how do you sort of uh, you know juggle the world of uh, internet marketing that's what we try and do in that uh, course uh, then we look at pardon me we look at uh, bakery planning for people who want to start their setup we look at various formats how what sort of business models can you have what sort of formats can you have a uh, bakery format that is uh, what how d how do you uh, use the finances how do you plan the finances uh, how do you uh, acquire finances also uh, you know we touch upon that uh, lightly but mostly we uh, understand where you're going to spend how you're going to spend all those things then then uh, also understanding the prerequisites that you can't just start a business right you need to have a, a business name you need to uh, have a, you know a particular pattern you need to have certain licenses you need to have certain uh, checks in place so what are these that's the other thing that we discuss in the in the bakery planning uh, class we also look at setup requirements depending on whether it's from home the setup is going to be smaller leaner fewer uh, you know uh, investments if it's a commercial setup then it's going to be expensive you need to be planning it really well what what is required is also something that we discuss also we will uh, be looking at a business project presentation that uh, students will come up with each person has to come up with their own business project uh, for the purpose of uh, internal assessment, I'll discuss what we do uh, in a bit uh, with reference to what we do uh, in class. Apart from doing all these uh, uh, practicals, we also focus on a little bit of uh, research and learning. So uh, we look at that uh, in about a couple of minutes. Let me quickly finish the other uh, additional feature that we uh, have for the course. We have this sort of food photography session where you have a food photographer who discusses the theory of setting things up and uh, helps you understand uh, basics of color theory, understanding lights, using various surfaces, how do you create backgrounds, how do you set up your shots. Uh, how to use the camera how to use uh, your mobile phone camera which is pretty handy and of a good quality these days right so how to make use of it by no means again by no means we uh, promise you to become a photographer in a couple of those classes but the idea is that you understand uh, what food photography is how do you set up say tomorrow you are starting this uh, you know uh, a food business for yourself and you hire a photographer the photographer may be great and may be taking 100 pictures for you but if the photographer says you know choose the ones that you want which which are the ones that you want to choose you need to be able to tell what is a good picture right so the idea for me to uh, incorporate photography in the course is that uh, many things one is that you know you understand what how do you set things up and how do you you know change a couple of things and make the shot look so much better right that for your uh, you know for creating your menu putting out to your uh, friend circle on on whatsapp or you know using your instagram or facebook and putting out pictures there or whether you want a great picture for your website uh, and you know for your menu and things like that or if you are somebody who is interested in creating uh, interesting food content and uh, with content you need to have the knowledge and therefore joining the course would be a great idea but uh, you need to have uh, the eye for a good picture or, or making a good video right so this is a starting point for that so therefore we incorporated uh, food photography also in the course so that you have a you know a f a understanding of how these things work or at least a starting point to understand how food photography works and how do you set things up how do you uh, do the plating 
to make it look interesting so the picture that you see here is from our food photography class and uh, the photographers helped set the setup and this picture i've taken it from one of my students who took the picture on her phone so here you know the background has been created by the uh, photographer she's showed how to make the background uh, she's bought the background and then she set the cake up it's a it's a it's a fairly simple uh, chocolate mousse sort of a cake right but how do you set it up how you know uh, taking a, a, a one sort of uh, piece out of the hole and placing it in that way and using a cup of coffee and that uh, uh, you know towel in the center has changed the whole look and feel is what you know you see you understand what are the elements that one can add these are things that you learn and uh, if you uh, you know enroll in, uh, in, in you know in a, a day's photography course which uh, is pretty expensive and not necessarily available uh, very easily uh it is something that you would learn the same thing you would learn when you you know do the photography class here uh during our baking program so that's something you learn uh with the photography class so these were the peripherals that uh one were one were to learn if you one were to join the course uh, which is you know costing a little bit of internet marketing a little bit of how to understand bakery layout and planning how to do the uh, in how to uh, do your uh, uh, photography and apart from that uh, within the course there are a few things one needs to know that exists we obviously discuss details when you uh join the course but we have a small research project that one needs to work on there is a written examination because at the end of the day this is a course you get a course completion certificate but you also get a grading sheet so you have to uh be regular in class you have to be uh you know making your uh, practical uh products you have to do your research for the assignments you will have a written test and you also have to work on a business project the idea is that so you know often times i hear people say oh i'm going i'm actually learning it only because it's my passion but these learnings are interesting and you could be making use of them uh, you know with anything else you want to do in life you don't necessarily have to start a food business or a baking business uh, to make use of these learnings these learnings are uh, you know something that you can make use for any other uh, project you have on mind so therefore uh, i have included it so even if you're not interested in uh, starting up a business you would at least know if you need to know how to do that right so therefore the idea is that uh, you uh, do all of this in class and only after you have been regular in class you do all these projects and assignments uh, and write my exam uh we also have practical exams uh that you get your grading sheet and your certificate of completion so that is so this is very much a proper course that uh, one needs to uh you know uh, one when when one joins one needs to know that these are things that are involved and you would have to and it doesn't matter whether you're 17 or your 70 i've had students not 70 but i've had students who are 63 plus and i have students who are 17 who are doing the course so my uh, you know class is always a mixed bag of people uh, with a, with a, with reference to age or with reference to experiences they are all uh, a mixed bag there are people who've come who come with uh, you know few years of baking experience there are people who come with uh, baking experience equivalent to probably my age and still have been students of mine and they have uh, you know taken keen interest and uh, learnt a lot of interesting things and you know i have 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 been model students and they've done a great job of uh, you know what whatever they have started and i've have had students who uh, have never made a presentation in life have uh, i've had students who've never touched a uh, flour atta to make roti uh, mostly men but also a lot of women that they never made it but here in class they learn how to do that so uh, that's that's something that uh, you know uh, is an experience that one needs to if you're interested in food uh, and you're interested in gaining knowledge especially baking then this was uh, this is a perfect course because it doesn't take 
too long to finish the course at the same time you gain a lot of knowledge with reference to food and baking uh, you know while you do the course now what i will do is i'll quickly run you through what are your options if you take up the course post the course what are the things that one can do right because uh, if you've learned something you need to put it to practice it's very very important that you know when you uh, learn something you put it to practice and see whether it works and how it works right so what are the things that one can do one can start their own business which is um, about 70% of my students they uh, some people start small at home i've also had people who uh, have been already you know they jump they have a uh, they have some stakes in a uh, food or baking business or bakery but they want to learn because they want to be hands on uh, you know running the business uh, i've also had people who start who people uh, who uh, start cafes and commercial setups post doing the course uh, you could work with existing setups you could work with brands that are already uh, you know here to gain experience uh, to you know get your hands up and uh, running because when somebody has existing business the volumes will help you train yourself really well so a lot of people do that then one can you know take up the course if you're interested in becoming a cake artist which is uh, slightly different from becoming a baker but you need to be a baker to be become a cake artist right you need to know the basics of how do you uh, bake a cake ice a cake and things like that so this could be a stepping stone for those people or you could simply be baking for friends and family and you know uh, become the highlight at parties or you could use the knowledge to create content whether it's a blog or a vlog or uh, Instagramming your way to glory or creating recipe videos or writing recipes and things like that so you could with practice of course you could do all these things so we'll quickly uh, look at a couple of uh, of them in a bit of uh, detail um, like starting up your commercial uh, or your bakery setup now you could be a home baker you could have a professional setup or uh, you could just have a kitchen and not a storefront it could be you know for a takeaway business or it could be out of home and that you could be delivering delivering things to uh, another cafe it could be any of this uh, you could work things out on personal time uh, i have students who have a day job and they also do fair bit of baking uh, you know over the weekends C uh, commercially like make they make products and sell over the weekend or or you know whenever they find time so i have those people as well uh, it could uh, you know you could be somebody who is starting the business with your own money very little money very it's one of the easiest but at the same time toughest business when i say easiest what i mean is you don't need much to start your baking business from home but when i say toughest what i mean by that is because there a there are so many people jumping in uh starting the business and b because it is food it's also uh you know a business where people uh sort of uh jump in a lot everybody has a aspiration to you know start a food business or restaurant or cafe or something like that or even if it's home business everybody you know uh, like i always uh, tell people uh, in india uh, you know cricket and uh, cricket and films and food these are three things that everybody wants to try their hands on like you know when you are growing up everybody wants to try becoming a cricketer at some point everybody wants to try their hands at films that they could act or you know they can be filmy they're dramatic and all of that and which, which we see now right because of the social media we see people projecting that on their social media if not on you know on sc on big screen on through their screen they project that and the other big thing is food and therefore uh, you since you have a lot of people doing it it's one of the tough business to sustain uh, i know of a lot of people who are excellent bakers they bake really well but that doesn't necessarily mean they're successful bakers right uh, that's uh, another ball game altogether so you need to 
for you to know baking is a very small part of you becoming a successful business owner or entrepreneur so those are other things that you need to keep learning along the way which we help you get a head start with because uh, you know if you were to take up any other baking course you would probably get recipes uh, most often you would uh see people make the product so you see demos here we don't do that we uh make people do the products because when you do it with your own hands that's when you know what is going right what is going wrong and you get to make your mistakes and you know usually uh when in a class full of people you see many different kinds of mistakes that helps you learn faster so making mistakes is always good because you know then the next time you make the product or make the you know whatever that whatever it's not just in baking otherwise also the next time you make make that thing you know better you know what to avoid you know how to you know maneuver your way so those things uh, are things that would help you uh, you know learn better and uh help you sort of uh you know set for whether it's business or if you want to just bake for passion It'll help you do that uh well then the other thing that uh, we uh, discuss is how you manage the whole thing by yourself or you know if you have the money then obviously you can hire a team so all these things you could do if you were to uh, finish the course and then the we give you a uh, certain tools to start and then you need to learn your way up to uh, set up the business for yourself but we give you help you understand the options available we also discuss um, how you need to uh, take direction to that and then it's up to you how you make use of all the uh, knowledge that uh, we sort of help you uh, gain during the course right it would also <coughs> be a stepping stone for people who want to become uh, you know specialty bakers or cake artists like i mentioned before that you understand the science of baking through the course and then the artist part of it either you are creative or so basically uh, any successful cake artist is somebody who is already a artist or has the uh, you know acumen to be an artist and they are using cake as a medium so uh most cake artists have background in art uh, commercial or painting or whatever uh, what, you know different sorts of art sculpting uh, even graphic designing i know some uh, some people who have uh, those kind of degrees and they've used their understanding of uh, you know the art and they are now using cake making only as a medium so uh, in, in instead of clay it's become fondant instead of uh, you know uh, carpentry it's become uh, baked goodies for people so you're already an artist uh, or who has uh, a degree in art in some form and they're using uh, cakes as a medium to showcase their art most cake artists but what so i- what happens with these people is that they create with their artistry but uh, their baking is limited so this course will help you uh, set your baking basics right and then you can make use of the knowledge that you have for baking to make your edible art right so it could be these people it could also be uh, you know you are you once you you know you learn 50 products but you could uh, find your passion in making bread specifically that you try a variety of breads and that you are a bread baker uh, i think it's it's a uh, you know far more easy to become a uh, a cupcake or a cake artist uh, or a cake uh, you know baker but to become a bread baker you need a lot of patience and perseverance and also uh, people you you need to create and educate audience to see the value in the product that you make because uh, commercially bread is available so cheap right so therefore you need to really really uh, you know teach people make them understand what you are where you're coming from what are you making and why is it so different and therefore expensive so i have a couple of students who have uh, you know their eyes on baking bread only that they like the idea of making breads and they tried variety of breads and they specifically doing that you could also you know 
uh, you know you learn the the basics but you could move on to become somebody who is uh, specifically learning how to um, you know bake uh, healthy goodies some of them we do in class but lot of them you lot of them you sort of alter things learn that and then you sort of make those products so you could be somebody who is you know catering to a certain dietary requirement whether it is vegan or keto or, or anything of that sort so low sugar baking you could you could become specialty baker as well so you learn the basics from here and then you sort of uh, you know practice and change and uh, create your own menu for yourself so you you do that some of our students are doing that as well so these are the things that one could uh, you know do post uh, taking up the course right you could also you know I also have people who you know they say they want to learn it properly I have a student who wants to learn it because she wants to teach her daughter how to do it and she says that she needs to know it well and understand so that she can explain things well to the daughter daughter is really young uh, I have a grandmother who has taken up the course because she says she wants to make uh, interesting goodies for her uh, grandchildren and I have lots of mums who have taken up the course because they say they want to make uh, you know these goodies rather than buy them and they want to know and make it properly and therefore they've taken up the course you could create uh, baking content that you put on uh, various platforms and you know make use of your knowledge you could experiment with recipes once you understand how the basics work you can try variety of flavors mix and match flavors and create uh, you know new recipes which uh, you could uh, write about, talk about, uh, blog about, uh, make a video on and you could use your knowledge that way. So you could do all these things uh, post, you know, taking up the, uh, the baking course. Uh, let me quickly again just repeat what we do how we do the course so like I mentioned in the beginning we have 20 plus theory topics that we uh, there are about 23 of them that we uh, you know uh, discuss so we usually uh, give you a soft copy of whatever we teach uh, with reference to the theory we share that with our students so that they can you know keep it uh, handy on them whenever they want to go back and read and understand then we do 50 recipes uh, we do uh, two or three or one recipe a day depending on the products uh, in class every individual will have their individual table and they will be making their products themselves the only thing you need to share in the uh, uh, in the in our labs is the uh, oven uh, we also discuss what kinds of ovens when you come to class and things like that right what sort of ovens should you use and all of that uh, and m almost all products you make yourself it's not uh, most um, you know uh, hotel management schools where they run these courses uh, they do very little theory or everything is too theoretical uh, very little practical knowledge because the you know the instructor makes it you watch most often that's the that's the format uh, and here what we do is we make the students barring the initial couple of days where we make and also you make we make the students make almost all their products because being hands-on is the only way you're going to learn so you have your individual stations where you need to you know work on this you need to take care of uh, how you are making it and you know every time you have a issue uh, you'll have an instructor tell you what what goes how do you uh, you know what has gone wrong or how do you make it work or how do you you know salvage the problem all those things so you see everything happening right in front of you and you make the products right it's very very important uh, so you know we always encourage people during the course that they start baking and doing the products at home uh, if they're doing a good job of already what is you know being taught then uh, we tell them to you know alter it try variety of flavors and things like that and it doesn't stop at that I still have students who finished the course maybe eight months ago but still are in touch would you know ask questions queries uh, we also you know tell you where can you procure ingredients from and you know sometimes for uh, setups where to get your tables from and all that also we help you out uh, you know uh, with those aspects as well so uh, I feel we do a holistic job in the 12 sort of weeks uh, about 12 weeks that we take the course uh, that we we've packed in 
a lot of things that probably you know elsewhere you would do it um, um, uh, and in a longer phase uh, but we've tried and covered a lot of things we've packaged it uh, packed it for you know this three months uh, course which uh, currently in this situation kind of gets extended a little bit so instead of cutting short the course we have we tell people that it might take a little longer because of the situation we are in but otherwise we intend to finish the course in 12 weeks we that's the that's what we've been doing uh, barring these you know uh, these couple of uh, months where we've been managing like everyone else uh, we've been managing things in a way that uh, you know the focus is to finish everything uh, even if it takes a little longer than usual so this is all i had to uh, discuss with reference to the course i am hoping you know whatever uh, doubts you've had uh, on your mind i i've touched upon all of it but if you have anything specific i will be going through uh, the questions um, on the youtube live so please post your questions there and i will look at them and answer them one by one just give me half a minute I'll quickly check if I have queries there and I'll Okay. A lot of people have asked me uh, a lot of people have asked about uh, the cost details uh, or the fee structure. Uh, roughly what I can tell you is that we used to have a 42 uh, 42k plus taxes and 10k for uh, ingredients and we intend to do our in this fee structure we intend to do our uh, all our practicals in class so whatever products we make uh, so this is again a thing right first I, as I mentioned during my uh, you know uh, discussion that we use good quality ingredients are only butter to make our products and not substandard uh, you know um, alternate uh, fats and ingredients so uh, the ingredients you pay for the ingredients and you take your products back home so when you whenever you make something you tend to take those products back so most uh, you know home management courses you make the products and then you can't really take it back home you leave them for you know uh, in the college mostly that's the way things work so uh, my focus is that you need to eat what you make I have a lot of bakers who bake the products but they don't necessarily eat a lot but I ensure that they try the uh, the batter as well and the finished product as well so that you know you understand what is going right what is uh, you know uh, what you need to learn so uh, there goes my answer for the fee detail but i would request for all those who are interested to please get in touch with the sales team you give a call uh, drop a message uh, we will contact you uh, you know and discuss more in in detail the course and things like that and if there is anybody who has more questions and you know once discussing it with uh, our sales team if you have further questions uh, they always arrange a call back uh, where you could discuss uh, the details of the course uh, more information if you need uh, with me or someone on my team we are always open to uh, you know giving you as much information as we can uh, as far as the course is concerned uh, then so currently uh, uh, somebody's asked a question about online and uh, offline whether we are doing the uh, classes online and offline currently we do have uh, a system where we are doing a online plus offline combination but we are looking at doing 
the entire course offline specifically the theory and therefore we're looking to do that and we may be you know bec we already have a complete online class on this online class is all the theory and the practicals also happens online so we uh, are already uh, doing three batches like that and here people are coming from across the country it's not necessarily people from the city people are coming from across the country to join the, the to do the course so uh, how is now a lot of questions would be on what about this online class particularly and how this only online thing where everything happens online how does this function uh, and how is it why is it different from maybe a YouTube video so my answer to that question would be I know people have not asked but this will arise when you think of the online class my answer to that question is that uh, how we conduct our online classes we give you recipe details in advance and then during the class we run the video of what we have made and you have a teacher present who will help you uh, you know guide you at every step of the way he or she is going to be with you for those two two and a half hours or sometimes even three that you make the product you are at home you make the product and this person is watching you do that instructing you do that and also helping you wherever things are uh, you know wherever you need instructions and help so that's how our online uh, uh, you know classes run as far as the only online is concerned now the plan uh, is to do a class hands-on at the at the uh, you know center lab baking lab uh, but I want to be a little flexible by saying that we also have to keep the situation in mind because uh, we don't know what happens the next month so ra currently we for all the people who had enrolled with us since June, we are doing a online uh, plus contact classes in certain places, not everywhere, certain places we have, you know, sort of uh, people have started um, uh, sort of um, coming over uh, in a very small uh, batch uh, with, you know, keeping everything in the a requirement of the situation in mind we do these uh, uh, sessions we have just about testing at places and we're doing the products uh, here physically in class and the plan is to roll out our regular format going forward the plan is to do that where we do everything uh, here in the class itself that's the that's the plan right now uh, and that's what we are hoping we intend to achieve so the bad sizes would go down because we need to you know take care of that situation and uh, therefore you would probably you know have not that we were giving any less attention to people because our baking batches are anyways pretty small they are not very big the maximum we can have is about 12 14 students so it's not going to be bigger than that because we need to give attention to each of the students and understand and you know be there so even while conducting our practical classes you have one teacher you have a lab in charge for support uh, so that you know everybody is comfortable and everybody uh, can you know do the things together the at the same time so we are uh, you, you know we take care of that but now in today's situation in, in the current situation rather it's uh, the numbers have gone down further the number of students that we take in class so you get like more time with uh, the uh, faculty and uh, you know staying there and doing the products and things like that so uh, currently like I told you we intend to start a regular batch where you come and do the class or we do uh, in we are looking at a complete online class which is where you know uh, you do everything from the theory to the practical online that's the plan right and for more details please please do get in touch with the sales team they'll guide you and if you want to you know uh, personally have a word with me or you know or anyone on my team you can um, you can do that for sure uh, somebody's asked about the duration of the course we intend to finish the course our course is designed for 12 weeks uh, like I mentioned in the current situation a couple of weeks uh, here and there uh, mostly more than uh, 12 is what we are uh, taking uh, to finish the course so our intent it is to do it in uh, 12 weeks or less but a couple of weeks here and there so for I hope that answers the question to an somebody is asked when does the batch start we are we have batches starting every month 
so please get in touch with the sales team to understand where the batch is start so we currently have a uh, four functional centers and we will be starting a fifth center so technically we have five centers uh, so you need to connect with them to know where where uh, you know at what center at what time the batch is starting so there are many batches that uh, start simultaneously so for all those who are interested please connect with the sales team they'll t guide you uh, to your nearest center or wherever you know currently the uh, the course is going to start so um, we have uh, five centers where we have these classes Panjagutta, Himatnagar, uh, Garjiboli, Kukatpalli and uh, we are going to, we, our lab is ready but we need to start functioning from Kottapet soon. So these are the places where we have our class, our labs. Uh, once you know we have a sufficient number, once we get everything in place, uh, they, the sales team already would have decided where we are starting our next batches and they will guide you with when uh, the batches will start, they will guide you with what are the timings and all those things. So please get in touch with them, they will help you out with that. So I. I think I've answered your questions of where the bats our labs are located. Our labs are located across the city. Uh, you need to figure out where the classes are happening. Uh, they'll guide you with that. They'll help you understand all of that, right? So the timing somebody is asking about timings now that again it's different timings for different uh, centers some some centers we have uh, timings in the morning so uh, to just give you a gist of how much time do we take so if we do three days a week class uh, we if if it's a only theory class it takes two hours if it's a practical class it takes about three three and a half hours so that's the general uh, time and you if it's a morning batch we usually start by 10 10 30 it's if it's an afternoon batch we start by uh, you know two o'clock so usually these are our timings for our batches but specific if you want to know you have to get in touch with our sales team they'll tell you about the specifics about uh, which center what timing which days all of that right so currently I see these are the questions that I think I've answered all of uh, these Okay, somebody has asked about internship and um, I need to tell you that uh, we don't offer internships. We sometimes if we have info about somebody is looking, most often than not, unfortunately, uh, here in Hyderabad, most people are looking for uh, employees you know so every time we get to know that somebody uh, some brand or somebody is looking for someone like that we pass on this information to our students but uh, we don't provide internships so to say but we always uh, you know every time I you know if, if either through our placements or personally uh, to any of us we get to know that somebody is looking for interns or somebody is looking for uh, you know employees we always pass on the information to our students to check out to go into view and most brands uh, unfortunately here in Hyderabad prefer uh, entry level employees rather than interns uh, most of them uh, you know is what my last 16 months of experience have been that they would look at uh, they don't want people coming over and hiring them for a job uh, but internships are a uh, little difficult to get by but uh, every time we have any information that somebody is looking for something like that we always pass on that information to our students so that they can check out if uh, you know they can uh, get some opportunities to uh, try their hands on right so I think more or less have answered all the questions many questions about whether the class is online uh, or offline so like I'll repeat it I'll repeat myself once again so we have a complete online class or uh, our plan is to for the coming months to roll out a complete offline class currently uh, and I'm hoping that you know the situation becomes better or at least stays at where it is so that we don't have to change the format but this is what it is currently so please get in touch with our sales team and they'll help you out with all the details with reference to fees taxes or uh, how to start where to come what to do and if anybody feels they want more uh, you know information uh, regarding the course please feel free to connect with the sales team they'll put you through me or someone on my team who will be able to answer all your queries right so I think I have answered 
all of your queries i hope this uh, webinar was useful for people who are intending to start the course and for people who are on the fence that uh, you know whether to take it up or not i hope they are coming to this side of the fence where they have decided to take up the course and i'm hoping that we uh, you know m meet people uh, either through a screen uh, or uh, in person when they join the course right so i think i'll sign off i have tried to uh, encapsulate everything that i had to discuss with reference to the course uh, in this last hour i hope people had a good time i hope it wasn't boring uh, and i could go on and on about baking but i'll leave that to uh, when people join the course right thank you so much for tuning in i am going to take your leave now thank you so much bye guys